if you pay close attention and actually take the time to implement these changes into your workflow, you're going to become a faster editor. It's taken me over five years to learn all the tips I'm about to teach you, and I'm condensing it all into a single video. And despite what you may think, you can't just drink more coffee. Trust me, I've already tried that. All right, so let's jump right into tip number one, which is block out time dedicated solely to editing. Editing videos is a task that requires large chunks of time. And it's so, so, so important to get into a flow state where you're immersed and the only thing on your mind is making the best video you possibly can. And if you're interrupted during this process, it forces you to go backwards in the timeline or rewatch something you already made. And these precious minutes you spend trying to remember where you left off or get back into the swing of things can quickly turn into hours when you're working on a project. What works best for me is blocking out large chunks of time throughout your day where your sole task is to edit. Nothing else, no exceptions. Put your phone on silent or airplane mode, get it out of your sight. Even if you have other calls or meetings or tasks throughout the day, Try to schedule those for one part of the day and leave the rest of it for editing. When you aren't stopping every 15 minutes, it's amazing how much you can get done in just a few hours. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get into the next tip. Before you even start editing, it's super important to organize all your assets. If there's anything, and I mean anything you are using in multiple videos time and time again, it should be organized in a folder on your hard drive for quick access. When I start a new project, I import folders with everything I'll need, whether it's sound effects, overlays, light leaks, motion graphics, a title animation, all that stuff is organized and I can quickly just drag and drop it all into my new project. You don't wanna be re-downloading these things for every project. You don't wanna be digging through five videos looking for a sound effect you used once before. They should be organized and able to be found within a couple clicks somewhere on a hard drive. Oh, and if you do need something like a new sound effect, obviously you can download it, but add it to that folder so that library of assets is constantly expanding. Not only is this gonna speed up your edit, but I find it actually makes my videos better. When these things are already in my project, I'm more likely to go a little above and beyond with the sound effects or the overlays. Everything's right there in the project. You don't have to go digging for it. Okay, so we're almost ready to start editing, but real quick, I wanna talk about proxy files. A proxy file is just a copy of your footage that's often lower resolution, but most importantly, it's easier to edit. Depending on your program and your computer, as well as the footage you're editing, there's gonna be times when you just can't edit smoothly. You're gonna hit space bar and it's gonna be trying to play back, but it's gonna be choppy, you're gonna get frustrated. Nope, I can't edit like this, I'm done. In Premiere Pro, all you need to do to fix this is select any of the clips that are giving you trouble, right click them, go down to proxy and create proxies. I typically do a ProRes high resolution proxy and then click OK. Once that's done, you should be able to edit any footage pretty dang smoothly. And if you do want to toggle back to the full resolution footage, you can do that with this button here. Now, typically it's best to do this before you start editing. Do it the night before, do it during a lunch break. So when you do get to that time that you blocked out for editing, everything's ready to go. All right, the next tip is something you should already be doing, but if you aren't, it's gonna change your life as an editor. We're talking keyboard shortcuts. This could save you hours on a large project, so I wanna go over some of my favorites. Some of these are gonna be the default shortcuts. Some of them I'm pretty sure I've customized, but I'll put the name of the shortcut as well as the key I bind it to. So if you want the same setup as me, you should be able to just follow along. Okay, so typically the way to cut a clip is you move your mouse over, click the razor, move it back to the timeline, click on your clip. This is a ridiculous waste of time when you can just bind add edit to S on your keyboard and just press it to make a cut. If you want to trim off the beginning of a clip, hit Q for ripple trim previous edit to playhead. If you want to trim off the end of a clip, hit W for ripple trim next edit to playhead. I and O allow you to mark in and out points and drag only part of a clip into your timeline. M allows you to make a marker on the timeline so you can make notes or snap to specific parts. 
Spacebar is used for pause and play. Control Z will undo anything you just did. Control Shift Z will redo anything you just did. Holding Alt on the keyboard and dragging allows you to duplicate a clip. Control L allows you to unlink the audio and video tracks or relink them. T allows you to use the text tool. V allows you to go back to the selection tool. A plus left click allows you to select every track in front of where you click. Shift A plus left click allows you to select every track behind where you click. J can be used to watch a clip in reverse, K can pause it, and L can play the clip forward or at two times speed or at four times speed depending on how many times you hit it. If you need to fade or dissolve an audio or video track, you better not be going up to effects and typing in crossfade. Instead, just right click the beginning or end of the track and hit apply default transition. You can actually customize this to a variety of transitions. Now, there are a ton of shortcuts out there and it's important to find the ones that work best for your workflow, but these are just a few of my favorites. It's gonna feel weird at first, but once you memorize a lot of these, you're actually gonna wonder how you edited without them. It is so much more efficient. Moving on, let's talk presets and templates. I really wish I'd started doing this sooner. Similar to organizing your assets, if there's anything you are doing multiple times throughout your video, it should be a preset. Wanna zoom in real quick on your face to emphasize what you're saying? Don't do the whole keyframe thing every time. Do it once, save it as a preset, and just drag and drop it onto your footage. Same thing with a slow zoom in or zoom out or pan left or pan right, or if there's a color correction you're always doing or a blur you like to use. Instead of adding the effect and trying to customize it every time, just make it a preset. Occasionally, you might need to tweak them a little bit, but 95% of the time, they should just be drag and drop. You should not be redundantly doing the same thing over and over throughout your edit. Additionally, if there are any effects you're frequently using, make a customized favorites folder or organize it as much as you want, but make it easier to find those effects. Okay, so we're editing now and I really wanna talk about working in different passes. This can be hard sometimes, especially if you're super excited about a project, but nine times out of 10, working in separate passes is gonna be the fastest way to get through an edit. Sometimes you import your footage and all of a sudden you just wanna color it to see how it looks, and then you spend 30 minutes finding a font and you start adding sound effects. I've totally been there. First and foremost though, you should focus on getting the main story put together. For something like a YouTube video, that's editing the talking head footage first. Oftentimes, I'm taking 15 minutes of talking and condensing it down to 10 minutes or sometimes even five minutes. So if in the middle of doing that, I'd started adding sound effects and graphics and B-roll, a lot of that might just get cut out of the video anyways. Finalize your story, then worry about B-roll and graphics and color grading and audio. Now, if you're editing and you do have a stroke of genius, an idea you really wanna implement, just hit M on your keyboard, make a marker, add a little note, and come back to it later. Okay, so I'm a little bit reluctant to talk about this last tip, which is invest in high quality equipment. Spending thousands of dollars on equipment isn't inherently gonna make your edits any better, but all else equal, it can speed it up a little bit. Okay, so the first thing I'd recommend upgrading is your computer. Now, once you can edit smoothly, a new computer is gonna have pretty diminishing returns. But if you are constantly making proxies or struggling with choppy playback, investing in a new machine is probably a good idea. After that, I'd really look into investing into a second monitor or just a larger monitor. For general productivity, this just makes so much sense. You can have your editing program on one monitor and files on the bottom or tutorials or scripts or even another program. There's just so many ways to use this and it's just gonna make everything you do a little bit faster. Also, if you aren't already editing off of a solid state drive or SSD, I highly recommend getting one of those. And this isn't sponsored, but if you have extra money just burning a hole in your pocket, I am a huge fan of the Logitech MX Master 3 mouse. It's the most ergonomic and comfortable mouse I've ever used. It's got tons of programmable buttons, got a horizontal scroll wheel for zipping through your timeline. It's definitely extra, you don't need it, but it also might make you like one to 2% faster. 
If you're serious about getting faster as an editor, don't just move on with your day. Start implementing some of these things into your workflow. You're either gonna get through your videos quicker or you're gonna have more time to kind of go above and beyond and try new things in your edit. Anyways, that's gonna be it for me. If you're looking at growing your own YouTube channel and are struggling with filming yourself, I've got an awesome video right here that you can definitely check out. But as always, have fun, stay creative, and I'll see you all in the next one.